field. Introducing Brad and Greg, sons of Dale Rugg, a typical Minnesota farmer. Minnesota annually ships large quantities of meat and other agricultural products to consumers throughout the United States and in foreign countries. Gee whiz, look at all them hormone cars. Yeah, wonder what's in them and where they're going. Hey, I know what. Let's find better and ask if we can visit the plant. Dad'll take us, I bet. Adventurous boys, curiosity and dreams all lead to something very special that Dad would enjoy too. Gentlemen, we would sure like to visit your plant. My dad said he would come with us if you would let us take a tour. Please let us know. Here's truly Greg and Brad Rugg. It's fun to write a letter and look forward to a reply. In Austin, the secretary to the public relations director receives daily inquiries concerning plant tours, job opportunities, and information about the company. The Brad and Greg letter receives prompt attention. The Austin plant receptionist registers all visitors and makes special arrangements when boys like Brad and Greg write in. Regular tours are scheduled daily Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. Has the anxiously awaited letter arrived today? Yes, there it is addressed to Brad and Greg. Dear boys, we are pleased to inform you that arrangements have been made for you to take a tour of the Hormel plant. The rug dairy herd of fine Holstein cows watch as dad and the boys load up for the trip to the plant. A new awareness of meat processing is gained from the plant tours. They are exciting and educational, as you will see. Across the Red Cedar River, the rugs see this view. This is Hormel. The original plant of Hormel began on this site in 1891, and today is the largest of nine company slaughtering operations. Tours are available at the Austin, Fort Dodge, Iowa, and Fremont, Nebraska locations. As the Rugg family registers, Hormel guide Tony Corina arrives to show them through the plant. Hormel has 15 processing plants, six distribution centers, and licensing arrangements for the manufacture of special products in Canada, Ireland, England, and Venezuela. One of the initial sites on tour is the old engine first used by George A. Hormel in 1892. A display of popular Hormel products. More than 750 different items are produced here, some of which are Spam, Cure 81 Ham, Hormel Chili, Dinty Moore Beef Stew, Range Brand Bacon, and Dry Sausage. From balconies, you can look across entire rooms of assembly, or rather, disassembly activity. The rug boys watch as hog carcasses are broken down into primal cuts. After chilling, the carcass passes over a firmly anchored knife which separates the two sides. This is the first step in the disassembly of the pork side. This large saw wheel then cuts the shoulder from the side. 
So much automation enters the industrial picture today that it is not surprising to see the start of meat processing begin in this fashion. Let's watch the development of the ham, one of the first meat cuts to receive attention. Painstaking care is given to ensure uniform removal of skin and fat. A close inspection of the ham follows. The hams slide down a chute to the floor below, where they are fed onto the automatic scaling line. Each bin holds a given weight ham. The pans are individual scales that automatically drop the weighed ham into the correct bin. Skillfully removing the bone of hams before processing the famous Hormel Cure 81 ham, canned ham, cooked ham, or ingredient meat for spam. Very choice hams are saved for the production of the Cure 81s. Precise trimming of external and internal fat takes place. Smoking of the Cure 81 hams is also done with care. Appealing color and unmatched flavor is developed in the smoking process. Here's what the finished product looks like inside, the real test of quality. Back to the pork cut, the story of bacon. First, spare ribs are removed. Bacon comes from the side meat next to the ribs. In meat processing, we strive to make good use of everything. Side skins, for example, are sold for leather. The initial step is the removal of the skin from the bacon side. The skins are dropped to the fleshing machine. which in turn takes off all excess fat. The bacon sides are mechanically trimmed as they move along the production line. Skilled craftsmen at this point trim bacon sides to proper size and shape. The meat trimmings are saved for other products. Once again, automation. Here, we see a curing solution being injected by needles into the bacon sides. Nothing in bacon processing is more eye-appealing or mouth-watering than a view of bacon as it emerges from the stainless steel smoke chambers. A beautiful sight, isn't it? After it comes out of the smokehouse, the bacon is chilled and then formed into just the right shape so that the slices come out nice and even, the way you see them in your store. A high-speed circular knife cleanly slices the bacon to uniform thickness, about 20 slices per second. After exact portions of bacon slices are hand-scaled, a special saran wrap machine vacuum seals the packages for longer keeping and better appearance. Hormel bacon stays fresh longer when saran wrapped. The attractive packages are now ready to appear in retail counters across the country for selection by discriminating consumers. Another phase of the disassembly process is the separation of the shoulder and front feet from the carcass. Hormel pig's feet are delicacy items. The front feet from all the pigs Hormel buys are used in the manufacture of this product. Pickled pig's feet are very tasty and attractively packaged too.